Welcome to Ask Dr. Love. Welcome to Ask Dr. Love. This is the show where you get to talk about, where you get to ask about acupuncture, Asian medicine, African medicine, Egyptian medicine, Islamic medicine, any kind of medicine you want, you can ask about. And you can just type your question into the comment section of whatever platform you're using. If you're listening on your phone, you can send me a text message to 81010 and you're going to type in at Ask Dr. Love and you'll get a reply window and then you can answer your questions. So whether you're on the phone, whether you're on Facebook, IG, <coughs> or YouTube, and all the shows are archived. So if you really like this show, you can like it, share it, become a subscriber, and you can ask your questions about you, the family member, hopefully the family member, somebody you live with. So you can ask Google Assistant, you can ask Alexa, or you can ask Siri. Play Ask Dr. Love podcast. So here we are with today's show. The question does not have to pertain to the subject, but the subject today is needle phobia. People are scared of acupuncture your pins. I've had three people this week tell me they refer me to everybody and nobody wants to come. So when they get pressed for the answer is since I'm a child, I'm scared of needles because the doctor stuck me with a hypodermic and I just, I don't like needles. The whole concept of metal objects being stuck in my body just completely weirds me out. So what's the answer? How do you get benefits of acupuncture without pins. So let's define what a needle is. A needle is something that has a hole in it. So whether it's a sewing needle or a hypodermic needle, there's a hole in it. But the acupuncture pins are the same width as a hair. So that's 20 times thinner than a hypodermic needle. So they're really, really thin. And I would show you one on camera, but the camera's not, they're so thin, you won't even be able to see them. So what can we do to do acupuncture without pins? Well, the number one thing is what did they do before they invented pins in the 15th century? Well, the Chinese invented steel about 100 years before the Europe invented the filiform pin, which is made out of steel, that was the high tech of the day. That was really, really high tech. So how did they do acupuncture before they invented steel? Well, they used something called cupping. And right here, we have a cup. You suck all the air out of the cup and boop, and put it on your skin, and that create suction. We need, a, uh, we need a model to demonstrate this cup. So can the model step forward and expose his arm, her arm? Thank you. So this, we're going to just put this right here. Okay. <laughs> so obviously we're going to use a smaller cup. Okay. And you can see that it creates suction. Now, whoop, it fell off on its own. Thank you very much, model. <laughs> was quite sufficient. So what does cupping do? Well, cupping obviously creates suction. And the whole point of Chinese medicine is to move stagnant blood. So the process of foods and drinks and things that more than your body can utilize, so it has to store it. And that accumulation then becomes stagnation. So we identify where the accumulation has created the stagnation. And then we have different size cups. We have different size cups break up that stagnation. So we have fire cups and we have cups. And then for the breast tissue, we have negative pressure cups where you just squeeze and put the cup on. And so you can move stagnant around the breast. And we'll do a special 
episode just on how to get rid of breast lumps. Now, the third method, uh, besides cupping, is called gua sha. And gua sha is a scraping method. So typically, they use tortoise shell. And this is made out of a hard plastic. You can literally comb the skin, okay, where the stagnation is. And this also looks more like the shape of a tortoise shell. So what we do is we find any lumps or bumps or discolorations or stagnation, anything that doesn't look even. And then we can use this to literally scrape the skin until it turns bright red. So my model declined to be scraped until she turned bright red. But that is the whole point of gua sha. Sha being cupping mean, uh, is a way of getting rid of wind. So it's called uh, uh, suck the wind. So wherever there was uh, a disruption in the chi flow or the blood flow, we would either use cupping or gua sha. And both of those are the ancient methods of doing acupuncture without pins. Now, that's what we call dry cupping. Now, there's something called wet cupping where we actually bleed the person. And what we do, let's say uh, somebody had a car accident and there was stagnant blood and they had whiplash. And so when we examine them on the table, stagnant blood, there's a big ugly bruise in the base of the spine. So we make these, now if somebody has pimples on their back or somebody has um, blackheads or whiteheads or something, red marks, we can also use cupping to disperse that. Now, we can also pre that until it bleeds, and we use what we call a nine-star hammer. That's where we take nine acupuncture pins, rubber band them together, and just prick the area until it bleeds. We also use that for shingles, if anybody knows anybody has shingles. Not particularly pleasant is the cup. Now, Interesting enough, in Islamic medicine, cupping is called hijama, and they use uh, horns of animal horns, like gazelle horns or buffalo, typically buffalo horns. And they typically did it after a battle or after the war, and they used it for, just think, if you got attacked by another country or another village or an army, and then you light to protect your family and your home. And after that, you're all worked up. That's trauma, being in a battle fighting for your life. So for post-traumatic stress disorder in Islamic countries, they used hijama. Now, in my way of thinking, shouldn't we be using that for post-traumatic stress disorder instead of drugs? If so, blood stagnation. And if there's these big rope blue veins, I know there's blood stagnation. And that blood stagnation typically is below the belly button. So whether the vein is on the right or the left, I can clearly identify where that blood stagnation is. First, that, that blood stagnation. Or what if I don't know how to use gua sha? Well, there's something called pida. And we've talked pida in the ongoing online Qigong class. We talk about Pida a lot. So if you go to loveqigong.com, register for the online class, you can get the archives of the classes where we talked about Pida. I think we've done three, at least three classes on Pida. And Pida, uh, drumming, patting, slapping, that's how we bring blood to the surface to disperse. Okay, now I need my model again for the Tuina. Okay, model. I need my model again. <laughs> so this is called Tuina. It's called pinch press. So wherever there's stagnation. Now this is the trapezius muscle. It's also the stress muscle. So the trapezius, we call them traps for short, and the traps means that emotions get trapped. So we do pinch press 
to break up that stagnation. Now we can also do it next to the spine because people sit improperly and their posture is bad. So we can also do that pinch press. Thank you very much, Mao. So these are all ways that you can get the benefits of acupuncture without pins. Wow. So now is the time to ask your question. If love is the answer, what is your question? So I know Katniss has been thinking about this a lot because she's always asking me, do that pinchy thing on my neck. So what questions do you have, Katniss? So Janet Cassell says, good morning. I just want a glass cupping set. Do you do fire cupping? Sorry, I just got here late. Okay, so I talked about fire cupping. The problem with fire cupping is you have to use fire. So you use a match. What we did in, uh, in the acupuncture clinic, we took a cotton ball, dipped it in alcohol, set it on fire, and then we would suck the air out of the cup and then attach it to the skin. Well, when I was in, in school, in clinic, I volunteered to be the model and the instructor wasn't watching me. He was looking at the class and he dripped alcohol on my back and he set my back on fire. So I started thinking there's gotta be a better way than cups. So I would suggest you get a set of these, Janet, of the, wow. I would suggest the suction cups rather than the fire cups. But if you like to play with fire, be my guest. And we also have another specialized type of cup that we use on the neck. Now these are cups, but they have magnets inside. So these are magnet cups. So when I find someone who's got blood stagnation, I will actually put these on the neck. And so the, this is another kind of cupping. And these only stay on for five minutes. So these are magnet cups. So next question. So would you have a work, are you gonna have a workshop on any of these? Well, if you enroll in the certification course, the first class, the prerequisite is Thai yoga, and that's the online uh, ongoing Qigong class. So if you enroll in that class as a prerequisite, then you're eligible to take the reverse aging, I'm sorry, you're eligible to take the Qi Fit and then Qigong instructor and then Qi MD. So when you take the GMD course, which is the, the last class, you become certified as a energy medicine doctor. So that's our version in Qigong, the GMD class. You will learn about gua sha, cupping, electric stim. You'll also learn about uh, moxibustion. You'll learn about how to use uh, heat, ice, fire, you'll learn eight different methods of stimulating the acupuncture meridians. So those classes will be part of the GMD training course of which the prerequisite is Qigong instructor and Thai yoga. Do you recommend uh, cupping for, uh, I guess the fascia with the problem of cellulite? Absolutely. So the question is, is cupping appropriate for treating 
fascia issues such as cellulite. That is absolutely perfect. Now, uh, here's the real issue, is that you were born with all the fat cells you will ever have in life. So you cannot add additional fat cells. What happens is by eating the wrong foods, you just make the fat cells that you already have bigger. So when we use cup for the fascia, what we do is we shrink the fat cells. We cannot disappear the fat cells. Now there's some people who do surgeries which take away uh, what they call abdominal fat. Uh, what's that surgery called? Liposuction. Liposuction. And guess what? It comes, back. it comes back because the DNA has a remembrance of all of those cells. So if you cut out those fat cells, the DNA says, oh, we're missing some cells. Let's reproduce those cells. So bloop, they come right back. Better to do cupping. It's better to do cupping. And the fascinating thing is they just discovered that abdominal fat, which they call visceral fat. Who used the word visceral anyway? Abdominal fat is part of the endocrine system, which means it's hormone modulated. So when you feel bad about yourself, guess what your hormones do? Makes belly fat. I like my belly. And when you really love yourself, then the body doesn't need to hold on because you're getting love in other ways, then the belly fat disappears. What fascinating information you get at Ask Dr. Love. What can you tell the people about the change in the podcast? The change in the podcast. And then we are at episode 53, Eddie. Yeah. Okay, so this is episode 53, and this is Wednesday. So Friday will be our 55th podcast, and we're going to change the format. So we're not going to have a Monday podcast. Tuesday and Thursday podcast is going to be on ancient Egyptian medicine and how that relates to Greco-Roman, uh, Islamic medicine, Tibetan medicine, Hindu medicine, and Chinese medicine. So we're going to be talking about the historical aspects of ancient Egyptian medicine, ancient Egyptian mind science, ancient Egyptian philosophy, and how to utilize that in modern day. That's going to be Tuesday and Thursday. That's going to be a half-hour podcast. On Wednesdays, we're going to have a Cooking Raw with Dr. Love. That's going to be a one-hour podcast, but you're going to have to pay for that one. Then it's not a podcast. Then it's, not a podcast. Yeah, then it's a podcast. webinar. We're going, one podcast on Friday. we're going to have one podcast on Friday. Then the other thing is different. That's then the other things are going to not be podcasts. They're going to be webinars that you're going to have to pay for. So the, so the podcast is going to flip to once a week, one hour on Fridays. You have to register. So it goes to 21 Days to Wellness to get an email that's so you can attend. So you have to register or subscribe to that podcast. So you have to go to 21 Days to Wellness.com. So that's the numerals 21 days is plural, 21 Days to Wellness.com to subscribe to the weekly podcast, which is going to be on Friday. Ask Dr. Love. The other days, there's not going to be a WAP podcast. It's going to be a webinar. So Tuesday and Thursdays, we're going to do paid webinars for ancient Egyptian. And on Wednesdays, we're going to have Cook and Raw with Dr. Love, which will be a paid webinar. And that is the new schedule. So I want to give congratulations to my team. Okay, we got another question. What do you think about gua sha to detect stagnation for later cupping to really detect? Okay, what do I think about gua sha to detect blood stagnation? It's just a stagnation, I'm guessing, for later cupping to relieve it. Okay. Detect and relieve. Okay, so you can't detect it with gua sha. You have to know that the blood stagnation is there. 
and they are two different methods. One is suction, one is scraping, and they are used appropriately. So you can't use one in place of the other, okay? So the suction is typically for phlegm, for fluid, uh, damp conditions, and the other is typically for hard conditions, which would be lumps, nodules, masses. So there's a different style for the condition. So, so hard masses, lumps, nodules, that's what you would use the scraping for, uh, lymphatic issues. And then for fluid, for damp, for swelling, that's when you would use the suction, okay? And this is why you have to have the prerequisite of the Qigong instructor before you can take the course on utilizing gua sha, cupping, moxa, ice, electro stim, magnetic therapy, and light and sound. Those are the eight methods that we use. So I wanna congratulate the team. We got another question. In other words, any recommendations for breathing techniques to work with baby? Breathing techniques, wow. We did cover breathing, but I'm happy to do it again. So. Just tell them which video it is and they can go back and watch it. Okay, we're, we're gonna have to post the class. And it was just this past week, wasn't That's it? Right. It was just this past I'm week. Drop the link so we'll drop the link for when that was. But just briefly, your exhale should be twice as long as your inhale. That's what we call a uh, cleansing breath. And so, if you exhale on 10, inhale on five, and you do that four times, uh, if you do that 40 times, that's about 10 minutes. And if you do that twice a day, that's an excellent one. But then there's also the slow inhale, which I call the snake breath. And then there's the dragon breath. But if you go to lovechigong.com and sign up for the class, then you'll have the archives of all of the breathing exercises. There's eight different breathing exercises. And obviously it doesn't make sense to learn all eight. You learn one, you learn two, you practice those for a couple of months, then you learn three, you learn four, you practice those for a couple of months. Next uh, question. Lynn Marie just complimented you and said that she's, she just found you and has been uh, trying to get a hold of more Qigong and so you said love qigong.com. Love qigong.com. And we do accept donations for the tribe. And how do they do that donation thing? That's on Facebook though, right? That's on YouTube. That's on YouTube. You can give a donation uh, on YouTube uh, for the tribe because the tribe works awfully hard. <laughs> so I want to give a shout out to the tribe for co-creating all these episodes of the Ask Dr. Love podcast and the fact that we have 78 subscribers in the online Qigong class. And our goal is to get to 200 before the end of June 30, because July 1st, the price is gonna go up. And anybody, if you get in to loveqigong.com before the 1st of July, your price will always be $25 a month. It will never go up. But if you come in after July 1st, the price is gonna be double. So it's up to you. And we'd love for you to join us because the biggest benefit besides the daily is the archive. And every time I teach class, I drop pearls of wisdom. And that is the whole point of the blue dragon holding the pearl. So I'm here to give this knowledge to you so that you can make a difference in your own life. So no more questions about cupping and gua sha and stagnant blood. Did you have a question about stagnant blood? Yes, he does have a question, but he hasn't quite made up his mind how to ask it. Yes, no? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs>
I remember the first time, the first time I met the Dalai Lama and he asked me if I had a question, I was like, yeah, but I can't think of one right now. <laughs> I was so surprised at meeting the Dalai Lama. I was like, uh, but, uh, but, uh. yeah, so sometimes you can't think of the right question. But in the next 24 hours, if you think of a question, go to your cell phone, 81010. Type in, ask Dr. Love, and you'll get a reply window in which you can ask your question. So, does body drumming try to help with uh, the stagnation that causes varicose veins? Yes, it does. It's better to use it to prevent varicose veins than waiting until you have the varicose veins. It's really difficult to use PIDA to get rid of varicose veins. Spider veins, maybe, but the varicosities, those big ropey blue veins, the PIDA is not going to be as effective as you'd like it to be. Preventative. It's more for prevention than causative. And the reason why ladies, in particular, get varicose veins is because they cross their legs. They uh, compress the femoral artery. So when you cross your legs and sit like this, you're literally cutting off the blood supply to the legs. And that's one of the causative effects of poor posture. But also plaque in the blood, which is dairy, flour, salt, sugar, animal fat, and fried. And I call those the six white devils. <laughs> What's the best way to release stagnation in the leg? Well, the best way to release stagnation in the leg is PIDA. That is the absolute best way. The second way is Qigong. So those are your two best methods so we go down the outside of the leg, we come up the inside of the leg. And this morning's class, I went into great detail on PIDA, body drumming, and how to release stagnation in your legs. So if you want a copy of today's show, you'll have to go to lovechigong.com, register for the class, and then you'll get that archive. Question. To know what is Robert wanted to know what is the difference between regular cupping and wet cupping? Okay, so wet cupping is where you bleed, you intentionally pierce the skin to allow it to bleed. That's the difference between wet cupping and dry cupping. Now, cupping is actually part of folk medicine, they can't make a law that says that you can't use cupping. But if you're going to do wet cupping, which is technically part of bloodletting, then that puts it under the umbrella of medical, which means you go to someone like myself who's licensed. All right. But if you are from Russian descent or Jewish descent or Trinidadian descent or Chinese American or Chinese Caribbean descent, you can do cupping because it's part of your family heritage and you don't need a license to do cupping on yourself or your family. You can't hang out a shingle and say, hey, I do cupping therapy. That's no good. But if you wanted, if you know someone that has blood stagnation, that has an injury, fell off a ladder, fell off a roof, uh, fell into a ditch, and there's these big ugly bruises, yeah, I'll show you how to do that. Or you can come to me uh, or some other practitioner that will help with the wet cupping to get rid of that. Can truckers use Qigong to reduce the risk of kidney stones or prostate cancer? Absolutely. So truckers spend a, an inordinately amount of time. They spend 14 hours a day driving a truck. So we use PIDA and we use... Um, uh, body massage, body drumming, and qigong exercise. There are specific, bring that chair a little closer, please. Just the chair, just the chair. 
So we do particular exercises where we actually reach out and we can massage the legs and the toes. And that's something that a trucker can do. I don't know if he can do it in his cab. I don't think he has enough leg room. But in his hotel room, he can put his legs up. And then I teach how to massage the toes, how to massage the legs. And that's something a trucker can do every night and every morning that would alleviate the stress and the stagnation uh, from driving a truck. Okay, so I hope you heard me. Friday is going to be the last daily podcast. We're going to flip to a weekly format after that. But I want you to uh, subscribe to the podcast, 21 Days to Wellness, so that you can get the updates and then you can find out about the webinars on ancient Egyptian medicine philosophy and history and cook and raw with Dr. Love a webinar. So thank you for listening to this podcast. And if you're lucky enough to be on Facebook, IG or in YouTube, you get to see me live. So I want you to remember that your health is in your hands and prevention is the only cure. And if you want to be well, You've got a Qigong well. Thank you. I'm Dr. George Love for the Blue Dragon Qigong Academy.